Who'd have thunk <laughs> animal bite products in whiskey barrels? <laughs> Not so good. We're drinking old granddad. Okay. Is that okay? Oh, this the, oh, the whiskey. is a classic budget bourbon on the budget aisle yeah. that I think deserves way better than what most people give it credit for. I've never had this. Yeah. Now, the Should I be looking forward to it? Oh yeah, it's damn good. So how much? High you said, What's your version of budget? Uh, 20s. Okay, that is budget. Yeah. yeah. Um, this was by request because someone said, hey, how about some entry level whiskeys yeah. like Jack Daniels or Ballantines? Well, we had already reviewed Ballantines, so I'd send him the link to that. And you know I what? ran out of Jack Daniels yesterday. So here's the thing. So old granddad. I was, I don't know what's budget or not. I just, I don't. Somebody gave me a Ballantines and I didn't know if this was like a big deal. Apparently it wasn't a big deal. <laughs> I got it. Well, it was, you know, it's I, good whiskey. I still appreciate it. No, it was, yeah. nice. it was nice. Okay, so old granddad is a Beam Suntory product. Mm -hmm. Old granddad is named after, that's what Basil Hayden's nickname was. One second. Beam Suntory? Suntory Beam. Suntory Beam? So Suntory, the Japanese whiskey company, right. owns Jim Beam, the whiskey company. Okay. So And they renamed it themselves Suntory Beam. Now, you're blowing my mind a little bit. Yeah. And half of our viewers probably like, Rex, you're an idiot. How can you not know this? Suntory owns Jim Beam. Yes. And, and they've renamed the conglomerate Suntory Beam. So you think Jim Beam, you think America. Yeah. No, it's Japanese. It's Japanese, Japanese exactly. company. Okay. Now, here's the cool thing. As Suntory Beam, mm -hmm. they have heavily reinvested in the whiskey training, whiskey culture, tasting oh. uh, centers, yeah. the historical record. I mean, they're, they're doing a damn fine job of investing in the culture of whiskey because like most things Japanese do, right. they turn it into an art form. Well, they make amazing whiskey. Yeah. yeah. So, so the, um, well done them. On the nose, this... It's a high rye. It, it smells... Perfectly enjoyable. I'm not getting twenty dollars out of this. This is a this bonded. Isn't... I'm getting. I would smell this just based on smell alone. I okay. Smell this. I was like, oh, it's thirty or forty dollar whiskey. This isn't oh, yeah. something that's, you know, it's complex. It's got complexity. This is a bonded whiskey, which means it was made in one season, mm -hmm. meaning January to December, sure. by one master distiller on one distillery. Right. Aged for a minimum of four years. Okay. So and proof and uh, goes into the bottle at a hundred proof. And I did, this, so, is, this is what happens when I actually, actually... wait, this is the 80... Ah, you know what? We're doing the 80 proof one. This is not the bonded one. It's even cheaper. <laughs> I meant to grab the bonded one, and I didn't, no, well, so... Let's, let's compare them. I mean, let's do the the cheaper... Why did you take your glass? Why would you not leave your glass? Because I'm smelling it while I'm looking for the bottled and bond version. It's very important that you leave your glass. No, I I know how this shit goes, man. I'm no child. It's dangerous to walk around the vault with an open glass. I think I drank all the bottled and bond one. Here we get everybody, everybody watching this episode. All worked up. Edge of their seat waiting for All them. worked up. Dude, total licorice on this. And I know you're not a black licorice guy. See, I'm listening too much. This is a problem. I know you're not a black licorice guy, so I'm not... I get graham cracker and cinnamon. Oh, what? I get those cinnamon uh, cookies, the little bear-shaped cookies. Cinnabears. Cinnabears. Yeah. I get cinnabear. Come on, that's just good. I get a tiny minute, a tiny amount of cinnamon. You know a cool thing? Hmm. You want a cool thing about a cool story about old granddad? You're gonna like this one. I like stories. No, that 20 seconds or less. You are gonna no no. You're gonna like this one, even though it will be short. See, you you'll do, like this you one. do this. You set the bar. No no no. And my standards are so lofty. That... This is mooch category. Oh. But by an entire company. Oh. Right. <laughs> so during it, so old granddad was a nickname for Basil Hayden. Yeah. Right, and we know Basil Hayden because they named an entire sub-brand off of him. Sure. Um, went during Prohibition. Totally. They were one of the few... Totally like this. Yeah, Yeah, me too. Right? Yeah. Um, they were one of the few distilleries that was still legally allowed to produce whiskey or sell whiskey for medicinal purposes. <laughs> and so you could go to a doctor and get a prescription and it was limited to a certain amount per week or something like that. And, uh, and he would give you a little medicinal bottle yeah. And it would just had all granddad whiskey in it. Yeah. That's good. <laughs> You're like, it's from it's from my back, Doc. I need my I, medicine. I threw out my back. <laughs> I need my grandpa's cough medicine. It'll provide relief. Yeah, and you thought that whole phrase, wait, someone's been sipping on old granddad's cough medicine. You thought that was a joke. No, that's a real thing. That's historical. No, that's actually that's actually <laughs> well done. You set a bar and you achieved the bar. I know, I know, I know what I was doing there. Yeah. So 
No, here's the thing though, it was, it was prescribed by mm -hmm. doctors, but if you think of the opioid academic, epidemic and painkillers, yeah. I mean, it's just kind of a painkiller. It's what they do. It's what they do. <laughs> so that we're gonna solve we bashed an the entire We're gonna solve the opioid epidemic. Yeah. Just get some whiskey. That's right. And it'll cure Switch. it'll cure what ails you. Trade one for another. <laughs> Apparently. Alright, we got two comments. You wanna hit them? Mm, which one? What do, what do you like? What do you like here? Nothing. Well, there was a really cool story in the comments. Okay. If you want to tell the story, uh, and I forgot to print this out, which is why Rex is having to hold the laptop. Is this two different things? Two different things. All right. How did I get here? This is from th from uh, three days ago. My dad, about five years ago, started getting into scotch, bourbon, and whiskey, and uh, I'm convinced is some form some form of midlife crisis. <laughs> probably right. It's a good midlife uh, crisis. And as a result, I've had the privilege to try a lot of higher end as well as affordable good whiskeys that I would have never had a chance to try otherwise. Every Christmas when we have family and friends over, he brings out his prized possessions and lets everyone mooch. Good man. <laughs> off of his collection in an attempt to transpose his love for whiskey to those he loves. Hell yes. Yeah. Whiskey, through my uh, father's passion, is very important to me as a result. Hmm. I'm happy to have stubbed across your channel. Was that say? Stumbled. Stumb stumb I'm happy to have stumbled across your channel via Rogue. We like Rogue. We like Rogue. Uh, your channel reminds me of the Christmas parties and listening to my dad explain each and every bottle. Watching this episode embodies everything I've always wanted to do with my father's collection. Thank you guys. Keep it. That man. Hell yeah. Yes. Well All written. Right. Yeah, it was like super nice. Well written too. And it makes me actually want to put forth an effort in these episodes all of a sudden. Ah, uh, you've just decreased his midgetude. Yeah, uh, it's a dangerous game we play here. By dude. cracking into his cold, dead heart. I don't want to read any more comments. <laughs> Too many feels. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'll read one. I'll read Wait, one. You ready? This is how much that has touched me. I'm letting Daniel read the comment. As the official reader. <sighs> Moment of silence. I pass the baton. Go ahead. Only for this episode. This is not a burden I can hold alone. We're not setting precedent. We're not setting precedent. No, no, no. no. Andrew Webb asked, uh, since finishing the aging process in a different barrel, like sherry, we talk about this, mm -hmm. changes the flavor. Um, are there other ones that are that you should like maybe not use? Yeah. Well, I've got two answers to that. One is true, and one's a, a random historical story that I find amusing. Just give me the true. No, no, the true <laughs> one is, yes, be careful about what you finish it with because it's really heavy-handed, then you ruin the whiskey. Remember that Bren French whiskey? That oh, was yeah. cognac cask finished, and we hated it. Yeah. Yeah, cognac finished. Now, Woodford does a brandy finished whiskey. And more recently, there was like a Chardonnay finished. No, yeah. that was a Chardonnay. No, no, that was a Chardonnay. It, the entire time. Aged the whole time, yeah. yeah. And uh, 10 years in Chardonnay or something like that. Don't do that. Don't do it. It's a mistake. Um, but I will tell you, you know, one of the things they realized on how to age whiskey mm. was they were they would store them in barrels because it was a known way to keep things fresh. Okay. And one of the things that, that happened, that was an actual thing, was one of the reasons they ended up using wine barrels was because uh, at some point one guy was like, hey, so we filled our barrels with the whiskey for the, for the, plant, for the uh, boat trip. Yeah. Turns out the one we, uh, that used to have fish in it, not so good. <laughs> <laughs> but the one that had, uh, used to have wine in it, totally good. Yeah, that tripe flavored whiskey. Yeah. <laughs> Not the best. Not the best. So that's the early days of trial and error wood aging. Hmm. Whoops. <laughs> Maybe don't use the fish barrel. Who'd have thunk <laughs> animal byproducts in whiskey barrels? <laughs> Not so good. Oh, that's good stuff. Hmm. Good comments. Good comments, thank you guys. Yeah. Indeed. And uh, we have, may have a special announcement if I can find out if we are legally allowed to do it. Right, because... In about eight episodes. Yes. Well, for the 100th episode, we may or may not, ob obviously we actually may not uh, have an announcement What a tease we are. No, it really is because this uh, actually is a non-profit organization, so yeah. we are pretty limited to what we can actually do in terms or of... Or promote. Yeah, where we're pointing you guys and what we're... Um, suggesting what the actions are. Yeah, if it looks like we are making, uh, trying to get a for-profit company to make money off of what we are doing in a yeah. non-profit, yeah. that's called illegal. Yeah. And so, uh, can't do it. Can't yeah. do it. Well, and the good news is my purpose here is not to make money, it's just to drink your damn whiskey. Which is sort of the same thing. Yeah. <laughs> money. <laughs> All right, well, till tomorrow, may your crazy stay this side illegal. May you return before we have time to miss you. Cheers. Cheers.